Olá, amigos! Nós ganhamos um grande presente esta noite e gostaríamos de compartilhar com vocês. Nós conseguimos, de última hora, uma palestra do Dr. Amit Goswami, o maior físico quântico neste momento no planeta, o mais consciente, fazendo uma ponte sobre a espiritualidade e a física quântica. Né? Ele dispensa qualquer apresentação, é um nome de muito, 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 muito peso e nós estamos muito felizes. É uma palestra bem curta, o Dr. Amit estava na Índia e gravou 10 minutinhos de palestra falando sobre o amor exclusivamente para nós, para vocês. O Dr. Amit é físico quântico teórico, professor aposentado do Departamento de Física da Universidade de Oregon, onde atuou de 68 a 97. Ele é pioneiro do novo paradigma da ciência, chamado Ciência Dentro da Consciência, uma ideia que ele explicou em seu livro O Universo Autoconsciente. Dr. Amit publicou vários livros baseados em suas pesquisas sobre física quântica e consciência, como Física da Alma, A Janela Visionária, Deus Não Está Morto, O Médico Quântico, O Ativista Quântico, Criatividade Quântica, entre outros. Reconhecendo a necessidade de implementar as soluções apresentadas pela física quântica para as crises globais, Goswami e seus colegas lançaram o ativismo quântico Vishvalayan, uma instituição transformadora de ensino superior baseada em Jaipur, na Índia. Em sua vida privada, Goswami é um praticante de espiritualidade e transformação. Com vocês, Dr. Amit Goswami. Hello everyone, this is Amit Goswami, quantum physicist, consciousness researcher and quantum activist. I want to talk to you about love and relationship. You know, this word love, we covet so much. And yet, do we know what love is? We don't. So we say that love is an archetype. Archetype that gives us higher context of thinking and higher context of feeling. We say when we feel love with our heart, we feel bigger than ourselves. The love experience is most common, of course, as romantic love between two people, where the main attraction is physical. But during the duration of the physical intense love relationship, we really feel that the other is not separate. We and the other are one and the same. And this expansion of our self is why romantic love is so much talked about in the literature. And then there is mother's love. That's another example of love which is built into us it's certainly an instinct, and that too is very much talked about. These two relationships we know about. Recently, there is another relationship which is relatively more unconditional. This one is called altruism in times of other people's distress, such as the floods or earthquakes or uh, similar events cause in all countries, we respond. We are able to forget our selfish needs and donate what other people need in terms of money or service. Altruism. This too is a way that we enlarge the sense of our selfish self. So what do we covet love? Is it just uh, somewhat instinctual condition expressions of love that all we can do in relationships? No. There is a concept which goes higher than this. Because everybody knows that although intimate relationships are 
definitely somewhat uh, sexual in nature initially uh, between two people with um, sexual relations like in marriage. Uh, the relationship loses intensity after a while. And of course, if it is relationship between mother and son, uh, mother and daughter, that too loses intensity when the son or the daughter reaches puberty and tries to become their own individual. For altruism, we know it requires the distress of the other of a massive proportion before the altruistic brain circuit is activated and we can act that way. So is there any way to love without imposing these conditions, conditions of sexuality or conditions of uh, a genetic relationship or conditions of activation of love only during times of intense distress of the other? This is the idea that I want to propose. This is the idea that spiritual traditions tell us to follow love others without imposing conditions. We call it compassion. Sometimes we call it unconditional love. But this is very difficult to achieve. That's what the traditions say. And therefore people don't even aspire for it. But you know, all this has changed. Quantum worldview has given us concepts that changes the equation of love completely. Quantum worldview has introduced the idea of non-locality, signal-less communication, communication heart-to-heart, -heart, direct communication with feelings. Through what? Through consciousness. Consciousness is unity consciousness. Consciousness is one behind its appearance that we have in terms of a selfish ego. There is consciousness beyond ego. And when we learn to love in that consciousness, in that unity consciousness, in what I call the quantum self experience, then love changes in its texture, in its color, in its experience. Love becomes unconditional. But how to do it in practice? We say we can do it with creativity. Quantum worldview enables us to have the right model of creativity, which consists of really the slogan that you may have heard me say, if you are familiar with my work, do be, do be, do. That's all it takes. It really is a question of trying out various ways of love, that's what we call do, and then just learn to be. In that be, what happens is that consciousness takes over, consciousness that be bigger than I, bigger than the self, bigger than the ego. That takes over and processes the various possibilities simultaneously, many, many possibilities at the same time. And this work by consciousness itself, that unity consciousness, the one and only beyond us, that consciousness, when that enters the picture, then new insights emerge within us that really propels us to able the ability of loving another unconditionally. We discover the otherness of the other. We learn to respect the other. We can even establish a relationship that we call tangled hierarchy in quantum worldview. What's the difference in simple hierarchy? One of the partners try to dominate the other partner. At most what we can do is that I leave my partner in domination in some situations. In other situations, I dominate equal partnership in domination. But it's always domination, one or the other. This is what we call a simple hierarchical relationship. In the quantum worldview, the ideal changes completely. If there is a tangled hierarchical relationship, then the relationship itself becomes enlarged. The I and you of relationship becomes a we, a we which has a self, we which has its own objectives and purposes to bring out, to bring up in the world. This is the way to transform the world. And this is where I end this little presentation. Thank you.